Okay, welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel. I'm now answering question number nine from the um, Edexcel C3 paper from June 2016. This is um, kind of related to the new P3 uh, specification. It's the same kind of um, material dealing with exponentials and logarithms. So here we have a model of, um, you know, a mathematical model showing the amount of antibiotic in the bloodstream after a dose has been given. So it says the amount of an antibiotic in the bloodstream from a given dose is modeled by the formula x equals d times e to the power of negative 0.2t. So we can see this is like some sort of a decay. It's going down. Okay, as time goes on, the dose, the amount of antibiotic um, goes down in the bloodstream. So X is the amount of the antibiotic in the bloodstream in milligrams. D is the dose given in milligrams. And T is the time in hours after the antibiotic has been given. So they said a first dose of 15 milligrams of the antibiotic is, of the antibiotic is given. Use this model to find the amount of the antibiotic in the bloodstream four hours after the dose is given. Give your answers in milligrams to three decimal places. Okay, so we can take note of that because if you write to 3SF, which is the standard thing to do, then you will definitely mark the mention very clearly three decimal places. So now, in this case, we, we have D equals, the dose is 15 milligrams. So we can just write D equals 15. All right, and we have the time, four hours, so T is equal to four. So that's what we need. We can say that x is going to be equal to d, which is 15, times e to the power of negative 0 0.2 times 4. So that will give us our answer. So we have 15 times e to the power of, so you can use this button here, e to the power of minus negative 0 0.2 times 4. Okay, so that gives you 6.73993, 6.73993. So we can say that the amount of um, antibiotic is going to be equal to 6.7, you're going to to 3SF, three decimal places, sorry, so 1, 2, 3, that's going to be 6.740 milligrams. And you have to write the zero there to show that you rounded it to three decimal places. 6.740 milligrams and there's the answer to part a of the question then it says a second dose of 15 milligrams is given five hours after the first dose so remember the it's x equals d e to the power of the minus 0.2 t so x equals d e to the power of neg negative 0.2 times t so a second dose of 15 milligrams is given five hours after the first dose has been given using the same model for the second dose show that the total amount of the antibiotic in the bloodstream two hours after the second dose is given is 3.754 milligrams to three decimal places so you have a total now of uh, two different doses so x total you could say is the the dose, the initial dose which was given, which is 15 milligrams, e to the power of negative 0 0.2 times, now it's five hours after the first dose. Okay, so so this is going to be, a second dose is given five hours after the first dose, and we want to find the amount of antibiotic in the bloodstream two hours after the second dose is given. So you're going to have the first dose, then you're going to have a second dose, okay, and between them is five hours okay and then you're going to have to find an initial after two more hours what the uh, amount is in the blood strip so altogether there's seven hours from the first dose so this is going to be minus 0 0.2 times seven I'll tell you how much that will be the amount from the first dose that's in the bloodstream okay but then we've also got the second dose which was given which is five hours after this dose so this dose has been in the bloodstream only for two hours. So it's going to be to the power of two. And that hopefully should give us this answer here. 
So we have 15 times e to the power of negative 0 0.2 times 7 plus 15 times e to the power of negative 0 0.2 times 2. Now that should give us the same answer, and it does good. So we know we're thinking in the right way. 13.75377 goes on. So therefore we can say it's 13.33SF754. As you can see, that rounds to 754 milligrams as we were required to show. All right, so that we were thinking here in the right way as we can see that we've got the right answer. So hopefully that will help us now for part C. Now part C says no more doses of the antibiotic are given and at time capital T hours after the second dose is given, the total amount of the antibiotic in the bloodstream is 7.5 milligrams. So this is the model that we're using. It's saying show that the capital T is equal to A lin of B plus B over E where A and B are integers to be determined. So you're going to have A times lin of a number plus that same number over E. That's what you have the same letter. It means that same number of E. All right, so now how do we set this one up? Okay, um, let's have a look. So we know that the total in the bloodstream is 7.5 milligrams. Okay, and this is T hours after the second dose. Okay, so we have the first dose. And then we have the second dose. The second dose was given after five hours. All right? And then you have to find... We know that, um, you know, after T hours, after T hours after the second dose is given, T hours after the second dose is given, so T hours after this, so this is T hours here, okay? So the total time from there to there is going to be T plus 5 hours. So the time after the first dose is T plus 5 hours, and the time after the second dose is T hours, okay? So we can set this up as the total amount, XT 7.5, is equal to d which is the doses were 15 for both of them e to the power of negative 0 0.2 and for the for the first dose it's been going all this time so the time is t plus five hours okay and the second dose you got 15 that was a dose e to the power of negative 0 0.2 well it's t hours after the second dose so that's going to be just t there all right so that gives us 7.5 so we have to try to rewrite this to make t the subject and write it in this form okay so first thing i can see is that you got 7.5 and you got 15 here so i'll write this as let me say 7.5 i'll take out the common factor of 15 let's get rid of these big numbers first you have minus 0 0.2 times sorry to the power of t plus 5 let me just make that a bit neater negative 0 0.2 times t plus 5 in that power plus 15 e to the power of negative 0 0.2 times t so i've taken out the 15. okay bear with me here taking out the 15 as common so e to the power of negative 0 0.2 times t okay now i can divide both sides by 15 7.5 over 15 is a half so it's going to be a half equals and here i have e to the power of negative 0 0.2 now what i'm going to do is i'm going to split this up into t and minus 0.2 times 5 is minus 1 okay so i have e to the power of negative 0 0.2 t minus 1 so i've just written it in this form here okay just multiplying out the bracket plus e to the power of negative 0 0.2 t okay now what i can do here is i can think of this as a half equals and this is going to be like e to the power of negative 0 0.2 t over e to the power of 1 remember with the laws of indices if i have two if i have e to the power of a minus b it's like e to the power of a over e to the power of b same base but you subtract the power so this is like e to the power of 1 here okay so you have e to the power of negative 0 0.2 t negative 0 0.2 t over e to the power of 1 that's what that will give you plus e to the power of negative 0 0.2 t okay so now um what i can do is i want to try to um make 
this a common factor. So for, first, what I'll do is I'll multiply everything by e. So this will be e over two equals the e will go from this particular term. But don't forget, I have to multiply e by you know both sides. So this is going to be multiplied by e. So this is going to be plus e to the power of negative 0.2 t times e. Okay, now what I can do next is I can take out e to the power of negative 0.2 t as a common factor. I'm left with 1 plus e. All right, and now I can divide both sides by 1 plus e. So I have e over 2 times 1 plus e, which is 2 plus 2 e. Okay, and that's equal to e to the power of negative 0.2 t. Now, what I like to do is like I like to make my exponent here, I like to make it positive. So I'll write this as its reciprocal, which is e to the power of 0.2t. So I have to write this side as its reciprocal, which is 2 plus 2e over e. Now, what I can do is I want to release this t. I want to find what t is. I want to release it from its prison of the power. So I can take the lin of both sides, the log to the base e of both sides, this side will become 0.2t. This side will become the lin of 2 plus 2e over e. And if I multiply, if I divide both sides by 0.2, it's like multiplying both sides by 5. So I end up with 5 lin 2 plus 2e over e equals t. Now, is that our answer? Not quite. We have to put in this form. Let's have a look. A, the form we need is t equals lin, a times lin. So t equals a times the lin of, should have put this down before, b plus b over e. So a number plus the same number over e. Okay, so we have t equals 5 times lin. Okay, that's so far so good. And then what we can do here actually is we can write these as two separate fractions. I can write this as 2 over e plus 2e over e, right? These will cancel out, and then we can say t is equal to 5 times lin of, and I'll write it the same way that they want, 2 plus 2 over e. Okay, so it's in the right form. We have a, a number, times the lin of, a number plus the same number over e, 2 plus 2 over e. So we have answered the question. A bit of algebraic manipulation here. Okay, um, and we get it in the end. Okay, it's a bit long. I think that's what the student was asking about, how to get it in this form. But I hope that was clear. There might be maybe a few things that you could have done that make it quicker. All right, this is what just, this is how it flowed for me. Sometimes it might, there might be other ways of, of sort of, you know, dealing with it. But this is how it flowed out for me in the end. And I got my answer. So there we have it. That answers question number nine, part C. And that concludes this question from this June 2016 edXL uh, core mathematics C3 paper, which corresponds to the new P3 syllabus. And this is very much within the specification for the new syllabus of P3. Okay, so any questions that you want from this paper, there are, you know, that I'm going, I'll answer. The, these older papers, I'll answer upon requests, I won't just go through all of them. So if somebody has a particular question, I would answer that question when I get time. You'll find those questions collected in the playlist over here. You can uh, also find the questions dealing with this topic of modeling and exponential logarithms from P3 in the playlist over here. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. And you can watch the video that is linked over here, which will show you how to use my channel to find what you're looking for. Thank you for watching and see you soon.